What is up guys, Rick Kakis here. Thank you so much for stopping by and today we've got some brand spanking new Destiny 2 news, courtesy of the Bungie weekly update that has just gone live unveiling official information. And so, let's get started. Now, of course, the big thing happening this week is the first Iron Banner of Destiny 2 Season of Arrivals, and this Iron Banner has been accompanied by two brand new weapons. So we're not brand new, returning from year one, but they have a totally new perk layout, tons of different roles. Now, both of these weapons have actually proven themselves to, in my opinion, be pretty darn good. The forward path has a little bit of debate. Some people feel like the muzzle flash is too much. Other people feel like the fact that the gun can absolutely rock people from medium ranges to beyond, it more than makes up for it. Anyways, the sidearm is getting a little bit of love as well. Like, Suro's full auto sidearms are actually pretty darn effective and have been pretty underrated up to this point. If you guys want to know what are some of the god rolls or what are some of the spawns to look out for check out my video that i did going over the different god rolls for these weapons in pvp and pve now something else interesting to know about iron banner if you're a little bit hesitant to go in and grind is that another change bungie made that i think was previously unannounced is that for match completions of Iron Banner, people are actually getting enhanced armor mods. Previously, you'd actually have to get them by leveling up Lord Saladin, but now they can just drop from the end of a match. So if you haven't gotten all of the enhanced armor mods, if you're a newer player, this is a great way to get those because even if you lose a match, even if you get mercyed, it's over pretty quickly which means your efficiency for getting these things is way, way more than something like, you know, the Nightfall where they also drop. So really keep that in mind. Moving on from there, Bungie did something huge on Twitch and the Destiny 2 Twitch directory has been bumping because of it. So what they did is that there's a gifted subs bounty. So if you gift two subscriptions to any Twitch live streamer in the Destiny 2 directory on Twitch, when they have the official Twitch Destiny extension active, you're going to get this Stream of Light emblem and this Watcher's Shade shader. And this has just been going off, as I've said. I mean, to give you guys an example of this, the biggest Destiny 2 streamer, Glad, ended an insane 42-hour stream with a sub train of over 28,000, which is, as far as I can tell, the largest ever. So the world record sub train is now in the hands of the Destiny community. And this is why, even though I don't stream, I think this is such a fantastic thing. It's getting the Destiny community really hyped up, really excited. And it's getting a ton of eyes from people who are just on Twitch for other things, but are seeing what's going on in the Destiny community, like on Destiny 2. And perhaps they're going to see the game say, hey, this looks pretty darn sweet and try it out. So I think this is just a win-win for everybody. Oh, and if you have any questions about this program, Bungie posted a quick like FAQ and here it is on screen. Feel free to pause it, read it over. And of course, the official TWAB is linked in the description of this video if you need to click any of those links. But moving on from there, we got some really interesting news actually. There's going to be something big happening next Tuesday, the 7th. Now, from the database, it is evident and we don't know for sure we never know for sure with this stuff but that a new exotic quest could be going live on the tuesday of the july 7th and this is because uh, there's going to be an ornament for a new exotic being sold on this day so those often coincide I am very hesitant with database stuff because it's so often wrong. Remember Arms Week? What happened to that? Nothing, right? Remember the Hawk Moon that was supposed to be in the game like months and months and months ago? Yeah, exactly. Anyways, though, I just want to say that so you guys know, hey, probably a good time to be on because not only is that happening, but it's Bungie Day. That's right. It's the seventh day of the seventh month and Bungie loves the number seven, so it's Bungie Day and they're going to have a Bungie Day fashion show. 
use the hashtag show off your guardian and you could win this emblem but they're also gonna have a bungee day art show so use the bungee day art show hashtag instead and you could win this emblem so that's pretty darn cool we're gonna have some pretty darn sweet looking guardians and also some amazing art on this day but not only are those things happening there's also a brand new patch going live on this day with update 2.9.1 and it's fixing a slew of bugs but there's definitely some things you should be aware of so for the contact events the heavy hitters triumph is finally going to be progressing that's always been a uh, glitched but moving on from there, something you really want to be aware of is that they're updating the contact weapons. So essentially, when you upgrade your prismatic recaster enough, you're going to get it so that if you get, let's say, a gnawing hunger from an umbral engram, it will actually have two perks in the final column and you can choose between them. This is absolutely huge for increasing your chances of getting a god roll, right? But it wasn't working on the Cold Denial Pulse Rifle and the Falling Guillotine Sword, both of which are from the current season pass and both of which are super powerful. Like I've been using the Cold Denial in Iron Banner and it slaps and everyone knows the Falling Guillotine is like the meta for PvE damage. So the fact that next Tuesday, if you haven't gotten an utter god roll of those two weapons, you're going to have a hugely increased chance with them being able to get those double final perks. Really big news. However, they also fixed an issue where the Falling Guillotine could continue damaging enemies after the heavy attack animation had completed. So that might just be a visual bug fix, but there has been some theory that the Falling Guillotine is kind of glitched and doing more damage than it should. That's why it's so good. So potentially this could be seen as a nerf. We're going to have to wait and see for that Tuesday. Aside from that, for the Sleeper Catalyst, they fixed an issue where the reissued Seraph weapon, so the new randomly rolled Escalation Shotgun, for example, were not granting progress towards the Catalyst objectives. So that's going to be good that you can do those now. Last Wish and Garden of Salvation. So next week, the gear will be updated to have the Season of Arrivals Max Infusion Caps. That's right. Gear all the way back from Last Wish is going to act as if it came out just this season. And it's going to be able to be updated and infused for a long time. A whole other year. And lastly, for the weekly Vanguard bounties, they removed Scorn, Cabal, Vex, and Fallen variations of the weekly bounties from the Arrivals pool. And so guys, that is it for the latest Destiny 2 news. I hope you guys enjoyed, found this informative, and if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.